see another video and a whole bunch of things going on that put me off schedule. A um, few things I added to the machine shop, but first I want to show another pro uh, product find, or a little miracle something, I don't know. A friend of mine came over and um, we started talking and at one point I said something and he laughed and I saw his, his smile and I, whoa, 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 wait a minute, you went and had your teeth whitened? And he said, no, no, I just, a couple of months I've started using this mouthwash and it's just doing a crazy job. So I asked him where and to go to Walmart and this is the stuff. Let me put it up there so you can see it. <laughs> so I'm starting to use it. Let's see what happens. It looks like it's glare or something here. Equate multi-action whitening rinse. It's actually, oh, I think there's peroxide in it. That's why when you spit it out, it's all foamy. But just wanted to pass that along to everybody in case you're interested. So, all right, um, cable Roadrunner Time Warner here is going to raise the rate on renting your cable modem to ten bucks a month. So my wife and I said, no, that's that's enough. So I was on Amazon looking um, at the cable modems and get the speed for Doxus three. And I was just about to push the button on Amazon to buy this one on one for it's $140 and that's kind of like what we need. And my wife comes out and says, hey, let's go to this estate sale. It's just right around the corner. It's a couple miles away from us. So I don't know why I didn't push the button, but I said, all right, all right, let's go. So we go to the estate sale and it's always sad because you look around and you can tell the kids are just get rid of it all, you know, let it go. A week ago, this was somebody's gold, and today it's all trash. You can get rid of it. But I'm walking around, and in one room, I guess they had it as an office, sitting in the corner there, just blinking away, <laughs> is the exact same cable modem that I have. And I look at the price tag on the front of it, it's $14. Okay, sold. So I get to return my other one. Also in the garage, I was, I was surprised because they had an Eagle oiler, and I've seen all the guys, Tom Lipton, Adam, um, using Eagle oilers, and I held it up. How much? And it was three dollars <laughs> sold. So it's kind of neat. It was really clean, and I cleaned it up a little bit. But the neat thing is, it doesn't drip. You can squirt oil. You can just drip it out. You can jet it out. But when you let go, nothing drips. So, um, that's a couple of things. The other thing that went to the machine shop, I think you can see it behind me here, is the sander. And I'll show you in another video why I decided to finally buy that. And it's uh, Home Depot, $120 a week. But boy, it is nice too. So I'll show you that and some of the finishes and things that I'm doing with that. Meanwhile, let me bring the camera around and I can show you a couple other things that I had in the shop. All right. The things that have added to the shop. <laughs> I only see people using this stuff, die cam, for marking and laying stuff out. Um, so I figured, you know, I haven't had a need for it yet, but watch, never fails. You wind up doing something and you need it and you don't have it, and so you gotta wait. So that was one thing I've added to the shop. Another thing, off Amazon again. This is a classic box um, that I made. Not, I didn't make it. No, it came from Michaels. Like I said, you just go down there and you buy an assortment of boxes. They're really cheap. What, one, two, three dollars. And you use the true oil, gunstock true oil on it to get the finish. But for fifty dollars, pretty nice little boring head here. I was looking at videos on YouTube on how to make them, and I'm thinking, no, nah, let me just buy one. Now this didn't look like this at all when I bought it. This part uh, here was all black. This was rusted and pitted. This was obviously badly pitted uh, from rust. And then they had anodized or did whatever they do to make it black. 
So I had to put this whole thing in the lathe, take it apart, and using uh, what was it, 80 grit sandpaper, just take all the stuff out of it. But the box was easy. I had to, it was a lot taller, so I just took the hinges and the latch off, ran it through the table saw to bring it down the height, put it back together, true oil it, and since I still have tons of felt left over, throw felt in there, um, use the ball, uh, end mill, cut the round groove, done. So I haven't really played with this yet. I know this is really sloppy, so I'm not sure how this is going to work out. But I've got one, so I'll play with it someday here, probably show it in a video on what's going on. What else? Um, uh, where to go? Ah, here. This video, I decided I'm finally going to uh, make the jaws. I had made the prototype. Where's the prototype go? Here was the prototype. And so the whole video, I'm going to show you the machining, finishing, stamping. And in the stamping process, I did some other more playing around with the stamps. You don't whack it hard because it puckers the metal up. You just do a kind of a nice firm whack and you get a beautiful impression. And this was the ring. At the end of the video, I was trying to find this ring and I couldn't find it. So that's the ring I'm talking about um, putting. Let's see, just draws. I can get, get them there like that. I'll put them in the alignment pins and I can either expand into it or collapse into it and do my boring turning or whatever. So I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get to it. All right, try to make my own set of jaws here. So this is my four inch chuck. Like I said in one video from Amazon. It's supposed to be a Steelix, but it says Shop Fox on it. This is the prototype that I had made. And it does fit in there, but there is some play. So I want to try to try to tighten that up more. Looking down in there, this surface is just clearing the scroll, the chuck scroll. I did look that up because I'm wondering, you know, I use the correct terminology for things, and you look this up on Google. And the thing with the squirrel in there, scroll or whatever it's called, the chuck scroll. So what I want to do is I think I want to make this faces or this part first. What did I do anyway? Get in there and measure this guy. Get a good chunk of it. Point one two two five. Make sure it's clean. Point one two two. Yep, half a thousand dirt. One two two five. Okay, well, remember that is. All right, one more time. Point one two two. Come over to the other side. Got a good chunk. 0.119. Okay, so we're going to do better than that. We need to make sure this is really done precision. So let's go over to the end mill. All right. Yeah, here's the new plastic shield. And we still need to get more plastic from rent out for the front. So tired of cleaning up everything, especially when you use the fly cutter. All right, so I'm going to use a three-quarter square piece of 6061 aluminum because it doesn't look like I have to machine down a whole lot. Yeah, that does. So what I want to do, I guess, is just clean up the four faces first, fly cut it, and then bring you back. All right, what I'm thinking here is I've got three cleaned up surfaces, and to do these grooves, I need to bring this to the correct height, width, whatever you want to call it. And I'm very close to it too, I think. Yeah, pretty close. So, uh, I want to fly cut this and try to get it to the exact height. But, if I bring the camera back around to the chuck. Do, 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 do. There you are. If, where's the calipers go? Uh, over on the bench. When I drop this guy in here, I've got wobble from side to side, right? Yeah. Yeah, quite a bit of wobble. But if I caliper here on all three jaws, it's all over the place. But if I caliper the front, 
it all all three of them come up to 0 0.392 exactly so I'm not sure whether that was an accident or just locked in the machining of the jerk this area is larger than this on all three so I think what I'm going to do since this is measuring out of 392 I'm going to take the final width down to 390 leaving two thousandths worth of gap thousands on each side uh, I hope that's going to work because I know this aluminum it's going to expand and contract so let me fly cut bring it down to 0.390 a little bit of a change in plan because I said this measured out at 92 yep 0.592 on all of them but I imagine I said I was going to go to 0.590 calipering this this is at 590 and it's sloppy this side's 591 and 591 is the larger size going in and it's rocking so what I did was I took this is three thousandths right here right single blade three thousandths doesn't get in there so this is close so I think I'm going to do the final cut 591 592 take it down to 592 see what happens all right finish doing the cut and came in at yeah nine four yeah no, wait a minute should have been nine three five Yeah, 925. It's always dirt in the caliper. 915. Uh, in any case, it wasn't fitting in there. It was so close. So I just took it and put it on some sandpaper and ran a little bit on both edges. And it just fits perfectly. It's snug. And I did put a micrometer on this. And I'm within a half a thousand. One side's a half thou thicker than the other. So I think that's pretty good, and I'm kind of ready for um, the slots in it. Wow, that is tight. That must be the half thou bigger. But I know that's going to wear in. So I'm not going to worry about that. So let's set up for running the grooves. All right. This cut, what I want is this from here to here is not critical at all but I want to be fairly close but what I want to do is an experiment I want to set this so that I'm at least 20 thousandths back I want to have plenty of room to keep resurfacing both sides if necessary so I want to come down to depth uh, I gotta do some calipering and get the depth because the thickness of this is way off it's way too thin so once I'm at depth, I can flip it over and get the other side to depth and allow for a finishing pass. Then what I want to do is do a final face cut here, flip it over, do another face cut on the other side, and then I want to caliper it. So I want to make sure those are both absolutely identical in size. So once I have that, and I know that in theory I can flip this over and do it. It should. All I have to do is worry about is keeping everything off of this face and off the face of the vise. Because again, any dirt, grease, can throw it off by a thousand, half thousand to a thousand. So let me do some measuring and get ready to start cutting this thing. All right, I've made a couple of passes on this. I want to make sure that I've got the same depth on both ends, just kind of a double check. So I've taken a small jeweler's file and cleaned off the burrs on that end and this end. And we'll use the new depth gauge and see how it works. So this has been calibrated on the um, granite block. Yep, zero. Alright, there's a hold button, so what do we do? Oh, gee, everything's in the way. I bring it out further. That way I know I'm in the deburred area. Okay, so bring it. <laughs> Still hitting, huh? Nice. Hitting the overhead. 
Oh, yeah, that's at the end of travel. Really? Yeah, I guess so. Alright, how do you hold this thing nice and steady? Alright, that's a little square there. Hold. What is it? Point oh five two. Let me just take it off hold. Yeah, I guess. Point oh five two. Back to zero. Try this in. Oh five two. <laughs> Hard to hold it steady and push the hold button. There. Oh five two five. Nice. Within half thousands. Take the hold off and try to remeasure the other side. Go back to zero. Yep. Hold on. Jiggled it. Five three. I jiggled it. I think I got it. Nope. Five four. Ah, this is hard to hold. Plastic. Yeah, that's solid. Five one five. All right. So I'm very very close on both ends. I mean, real close. It's hard to say. Well, it could be still further than that, but let's keep going to depth. All right. I decided since. I've got this part so tight in the chuck that why bother making this groove part so tight? To make it on the money, I'm supposed to go down 117. Wait, I'm not supposed to rush. So uh, I'm going to go down 127, give it 10,000 per side. And pushing this whole button is rather difficult, but it did dawn on me. Just read the thing, Dave. <laughs> Hold it there. Look at that. I'm down 1125. Put it back in there. Right. 113. 112. 113. 1125. Must be a burr or something. Alright, 112. So I gotta go down a little more. Okay, I'm at depth. I'm at 119.5. Is a kick. So it's time to flip it over. Zero out the DRO. The Z axis here, so I know I'm going to go to the same zero depth. Uh, on the other side, unlock this guy, bring it up. So I'll flip it over that way. Take it to depth, then I'll do a face cut, flip it over, do a face cut, and micrometer it. Right, we're pretty much there. Uh, one thousandth above depth. I should also be pretty close on that side. So I'm going to move it. Let's see, turn the y axis the other one. I'm going to take it. This way, two thousands. One, two. Right, come on, two. I'm lock that axis so it cannot move. So I make a cut, I'm facing it off, doing the final depth, flip it over, face it off, do the final depth. Take him out. It off. Moment of truth. Let's see what happened. Turn it on. Eesh, this is hard to get in there and get it accurate. 0 0.167. 0 0.1695. Alright, come on. 0.174. That's great. 0.1675. Consistently kind of getting that, huh? 185. One, 
One six seven five. All right, well. One six six five. One six seven. One six five five. One six five. One six eight five. Means I lost the cricket. All right. Well, that's why I need a lot of extra room to take it down. It's not that super critical on that side. So let me double check the squareness on this, and then do another pass. All right. The problem was in this guy flexing. So what I did was I took another five thousandths off, went back and forth and back and forth until metal stopped coming off, flip it over, do the same thing until metal stops, then take a final one thousandth and a final one thousandth on this side, and I caliper all four corners, I'm within a half thou. So I think that's pretty good, especially when I'm jerking on the handle here trying to move the table back and forth because I know this the X axis has to be moving but wow to, to get a half thou within I think it's incredible so I've got that depth now I gotta flip it around and cut the final piece and make sure it slides in the truck 